as an example of that. Every year you read that people cut the ice out of the lake and they build a castle and it's a great community event and there's a great uh, winter festival. And, uh, and then uh, when the festival is over and the, the winter begins to end, uh, the castle is either taken down or, or falls down. And so it, 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 doesn't la it only lasts a short while. And that's true of everything. It's true of every, it's true of our lives. <laughs> it's true of our friendships. It's true of, our, uh, of the, the buildings that we love. It's true of just about everything. Nothing lasts forever. But uh, that's not meant, to, I don't say that as a downer. Uh, what is important is that for the time that we are on this earth, for the time that we live in the communities that we love, the things that we love about our community we should take care of and we should put our energies into because they make the quality of life in our communities uh, better. And so, yes, nothing lasts forever, but let's make the things we love last as long as possible. So um, just a few things in closing about Adirondack architectural heritage. Some of our literature is on the side table. Please uh, please take it, take it. I think most of you know that we've uh, we are uh, based in Keysville. We have been here for 27 years. And, um, and we, uh, a, a lot of our work is public education. We do tours and workshops and conferences. And, uh, and uh, we're, you know, we're doing educational work all, all over the region. I am um, kind of on the, with my retirement on the horizon, I, I just for the fun of it, I counted up how many public lectures I've done over my 27 years. And it was about 475. So we do a lot of those, uh, a lot of those too. And uh, that's been great uh, fun for me. And uh, taking people to all kinds of places from you know, great camps like this one on Upper St. Regis Lake that's built like a Japanese uh, tea house to uh, the blast furnace at, uh, at Tahoe in the town of uh, Newcomb. Um, we also, um, for many years, did uh, programs in the region's public schools, including for quite a few years at uh, Keysville Elementary School, which you see down below, and uh, Bolton Landing, and, and, and in Plattsburgh. We don't do so much of that in, anymore, but that, that was great fun. And it just as an aside, um, one of the, uh, I talked about the influence of school children on changing the, the direction of the, the preservation of the, the Bow Bridge in Hadley. One of the most beautiful um, uh, letters I ever got for, uh, about our work as an organization came from a fourth grader uh, that's in that photograph uh, in, uh, in, in the Keysville Elementary School. And she said to me, um, I mean, the, the whole idea was to take these kids out into their community and get them to see their community in, in different ways. And she wrote me this letter in crayon, you know, Dear Mr. Engelhardt, I, you, you, just, you just wouldn't believe what it's like for me now to walk around my neighborhood. I just, everything is just so interesting. And I'm telling my mother all about it, and I'm telling my brother all about it. And, and to me, that was, that was success, getting someone to see their world differently. Uh, that was a beautiful thing. Yeah, um, we're involved in, we've been, we've been involved in six different fire tower preservation uh, efforts. Uh, currently, we are the, the 501c3 umbrella for the Friends of Poca Moonshine and the Friends of Hurricane Mountain. We also have been very involved in the preservation and um, public use of Camp Santanoni in the town of Newcomb for 30 years. Um, uh, 10 years of that was convincing New York State to to adopt a policy to, to policy to preserve it. The last 20 years has been um, managing it and, and hiring and training staff and raising money for rehabilitation and restoration work. And, and right now we have uh, at Santanoni the biggest single restoration project uh, that's been done there in, in, uh, since the state bought it in 19, 1971, uh, money for which we, we raised. Um, and so long, long history uh, there at, at Santanoni. Uh, just a little bit about our fire tower work. Uh, this puts us in, you know, um, partnership with Adirondack Mountain Club chapters and hikers, and this has been, this has been great too. Uh, we get involved in trying to save endangered or threatened properties. A lot of times we're not successful. 
but it's almost always worth the fight. And uh, you know, we were very involved in uh, the preservation of the old stone barracks uh, in Plattsburgh. That was that was a success. Uh, the one on the left is one of the buildings at a place called a hunting and fishing club called the Ghoulie Club in, in the town of Minerva. Um, and uh, that's uh, since all, all been demolished. Uh, and uh, I already talked about the Bow Bridge there. Uh, we also give out a lot of advice uh, every year, and uh, including to a group of people that was raising money and planning for uh, work on the White Face Veterans Memorial Highway. And the lower left is a rustic cottage that we helped uh, get moved uh, down in Old Forge to be the, the town uh, village, uh, village uh, visitor center there. Uh, we give out awards every year to recognize exemplary preservation work. Uh, we also put buildings and properties on the National Register of Historic Places like uh, the Wells Library in Upper Jay, the White Face Highway, the Hedges on Blue Mountain Lake, and a little uh, Presbyterian church uh, in Childwald in St. Lawrence County. We have published uh, four books uh, that you see uh, here. Uh, what else? And of course, we are, we love our home in the old, the former uh, Osable Horsenail Company slash R. Prescott and Sons uh, office building uh, right here on Main Street. And um, we also own the old, what we call the old stone mill, the stone mill behind it. And um, I can only say that in the next month or so, you'll hear some good news about the, the future of the stone mill. I, I can't let the cat out of the bag yet, but um, there's some exciting news coming there. And uh, many of you know that we're also involved in building a, a new public park uh, on the riverfront between the stone mill and the swing bridge, uh, which uh, unfortunately will not be finished this year, but it will be finished next year. And uh, that's gonna be a great uh, public uh, asset as well. That'll be event when we finish the project, it'll be given uh, to the town of Osable to manage. So that's my bridge spiel. That's a little bit of my arch. And uh, thanks so much for the opportunity to come here and, and talk. <laughs> happy, happy to ask some questions or hear some comments. Uh, or I've exhausted you. <laughs> so full, yeah. I've got a question. Yeah, Garth. I was looking as I was looking at the picture of the new Champlain Bridge, yeah. that arch in the middle. Yeah. Is that just decorated or does that have a load bearing as well? So it, it, it very much has a load bearing function and it's a, yeah, it's a true arch except the roadway is hanging from the underside of the arch instead of, you know, on our arch bridge, the roadway is on top of the arch, but it's in principle that's how it works. And this was this is a great little story. The designer of the bridge, his name was Ted. Um, Zola. What? Zola. Ted Zola. Yes. Yeah. So we're at a public meeting where he's showing them this big gathering, one of his conceptual drawings of um, of the of the bridge, and people are raising their hands, saying, "It's you know, couldn't you do something with the you know, incorporate the arch?" And he, there's, we take a break. He goes into this back room. He resketches it with this arch design in the middle of it. He comes. He scans it comes back out and, and posts it up on the screen. Everybody goes, wow! You know, it was like on the fly redesign. And um, yeah, that's how good he is. Yeah. How do you access the swing bridge? The what? The swing bridge. How do you access it? How do you access it? Uh, off Sable Street or behind the library? Or no, behind on, you know, uh, the end of Fulton Street. Yeah. To, yeah. Right behind the Methodist Church is yeah. the swing bridge. Yeah. yeah, people behind and would see the entrance. Anything else? Well. Can you tell the story of the, when the swing bridge collapsed? Oh, gosh, yes. I didn't tell that story. So, um, yeah, so our, you know, this present day swing bridge is at least the third on that site. And the first, uh, the first one was made out of locally forged big, big chains that went over the top of a tower and swung over the river to another tower, and the, just like a regular suspension bridge, but made out of locally forged chains. And um, I don't know if it was that bridge or its successor, but in, let's see, some of you can correct me about this, but in 
1842, I think it was, uh, while the Stone Arch Bridge was being built, so Main Street didn't have a crossing, an annual um, gathering, which included, you know, maybe you know the story better than I do, included a, a militia marching and a marching band, and a whole group of people decided to march across this predecessor of the Swing Bridge. And because of the weight, because of the cadence of the marching, the bridge collapsed and quite a few people died and were washed away in the river. And, um, and, it, was, and it, was, it was rebuilt, but a big tragedy. You know. It also went down when there was the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, it was yeah, there may have been a town where the towers were made out of wood and, and burned maybe right. in the fire. The, the ropes? burned because the fire was down in that section. I can't remember the year now. Um, and, and the bridge went down because like the cables now, there was ropes holding it up. And then the fire went up the street by the Methodist Church. I think it stopped about there at that, on that year. And where the parking place, parking lot is for the Methodist Church, that was the other Methodist Church Roby, what's the difference? The United Methodist Church and what was the other one that burned? That's what the Western Wesley Methodist Church. You want to tell them the difference? Why there was two Methodist churches by the side? Across the street. Across the street. Because um, during the uh, Civil War, at the beginning of the Civil War, the Methodists were slower in declaring slavery bad, so they lost about half of their uh, congregation, and they went across the street and built the Wesleyan Church. And then the Wesleyan Church, actually the Wesleyan Church turned into a school building, or where the school uh, superintendent and what have you was. But it all burned in about 